systems this evening. Uh, the problem I'm having with that is there's no relationship between the number I push and the one that plays. Took it back to my office, responded correctly every time. Brought it out here. Therefore, it is going to be difficult for us to chant uh, I will attempt, I think I can get up the right hymns, so I will have it accompany us with hymns. The rest of the liturgy we will have to speak uh, on account of no accompaniment. Uh, we will be following divine service number four. And the reason we're, I'm going with a divine service is that uh, tomorrow is an extremely important day. It is not the insurrection. Uh, it is the epiphany of our Lord. And uh, so this is Epiphany Eve. Uh, I put up on Facebook, no one's responding. I don't know if they've actually put it up, let it go through. What? Well, no, I know, but I put a post on Facebook that said uh, something about the insurrection and then Christ entered into the world. You could see it. So it's out there. No one's responded to it, so they must not get what I meant. Anyhow, uh, we will be starting on page 203, and I think we will attempt to do during the communion liturgy the 960, uh, which is Isaiah Mighty Seer. So I will attempt to play the first hymn. As soon as I find my... Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of his altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your, son, all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord, the ruler, has come, and the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are in his hand. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness, and your war with justice. May the kings of Arshish and of the coastlands render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, the Lord, the ruler, has come, and the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are in his hand. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory, and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven, proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us, who know you by faith, to enjoy in heaven and the fullness of your divine presence through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Epiphany of our Lord is taken from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise, arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. 
your heart shall thrill and exalt, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you, a multitude of camels shall cover you, and your young camels of Midian and Ephra, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news and praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Those from Sheba shall be... The epistle is taken from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all sinners, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable richness of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was according to his eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophets. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summons the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring him word, or bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, 
and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join in confessing our mutual faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we will attempt to sing 395.
Please rise. The text chosen for our meditation this evening is taken from the Gospel lesson, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 2. In particular, we hear these words again. Then Herod summons the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for uh, the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Thus far the text. I didn't see on the History Channel, usually they have something on uh, the Bethlehem star uh, and how it's not true and couldn't be true and all that kind of stuff. So I'm assuming it was out there this year. Uh, although it was actually, there was a historic uh, uh, configuration of stars that was supposed to be called the Bethlehem star. Anyhow, the news of the birth of a Savior will cause two different and very clear responses in the hearts of fallen mankind. Either he will rejoice that God has graciously and lovingly sent his Son into the world to save us. The other response is not understood by those who have that first response, and that is they will blaspheme God from their heart. They will be angry at this. They will attack those who would say this is the Son of God. And those who believe that it's the Son of God would just scratch their head and they can't figure out why it is. Well, things haven't changed since then, and in our day, either we will worship the Savior or we will seek to destroy him, even in our day. Herod seeks to destroy Jesus. Now, seeking to advance himself, he was quite willing to use the religion of the people as a oh, way to manipulate them. See, the Magi were seeking out Christ, but for a whole different reason. They actually wanted to worship him. And so you have the two sides there presented. And we must ask ourselves today, why is it that we have come? Maybe we should also ask a question in these days, why are so many people not coming to worship God? Why do we gather as a congregation at all? It's cold windy, and there's COVID going to get us all? In faith, we answer that we may worship him. Our fallen sinful nature, however, takes Herod's side of it. I come to worship him is really a lie. I come for my own interests. I come for what I can get out of it. I come really to worship myself, or I don't come at all, and I ridicule those who do. The reality is we're actually on both sides of this equation. We see ourselves in the hypocrisy of Herod, that I may come and worship him also. Sounds good. He doesn't mean it. It was not a confession that was given from his heart, this confession was no more than a means to an end. And in his case, the end was to maintain his power and position. He couldn't have another king rising up, so I will act like I worship him. The lips confess, but the heart is far from Christ. Herod was known as Herod the Great. He was indeed a great man. He had been placed into power by Rome. He had apparently known how to work the political system within Rome very well uh, because he had gotten a lot of uh, 
infrastructure building done. He was able to have one of the largest harbors ever built for Jerusalem by Rome. He had the beginnings of what is known as Herod's Temple, supported by Rome. The building of that huge man-made port put Jerusalem on the map again. And it brought accolades to Herod the Great. You can still find some of the structure of that harbor on the floor of the Mediterranean Sea. Interesting thing, however, Herod, who was king over the Jews, was not Jewish by faith nor by family. He had simply been put there as a functionary, and he saw the faith of the Jews as a weakness, as something that could be used to maintain control over the people. He used religion to serve his own interests. The stable of scribes and chief priests that he had called together to find out about this child who was born, he wasn't doing that out of religious faith. He was maintaining that group of scholars so that he could understand the ins and the outs of the Jewish traditions and people so he could use it against them. When the Magi showed up looking for this new king of the Jews, his paranoia spiked. He showed how afraid he was. Now he was getting old. He was toward the end of his reign. And he was plagued with many domestic problems. And this presented just another one. He showed that he was willing to use the word of God to fight against God. Interesting technique. In fact, wasn't that the tactic used by Satan in the garden? Did God really say? Isn't that the tactic that the devil himself will use in the battle with Christ in the wilderness? Quoting scripture time and time again? Eh, not fully correct. But using it against God. It didn't work so well. Where there is no faith, such hypocrisy, well, it's not even hypocrisy. It is just evil. It is evident. It is as if unbelief cannot help itself. In our day, we see the scriptures being used to deny Christ to deny he rose from the dead, to deny that there's such thing as sin, to deny what scripture says clearly. In our day, even though it's written down, they use it in the same way. In ourselves, we can still see this kind of sin happening. Trying to justify things which God has clearly said are wrong even to the extent of using his word for permission. Modern examples? Oh, God is for all kinds of loving relationships. Therefore, if you say that a particular relationship is wrong, then you are the hater. God is a God of love. All people will be saved. And if you say that the only way of salvation is Jesus Christ, then you are the hater. If you warn people of their sin, and you point out that unbelief leads to hell, they will say God is a God of love and wouldn't make a place called hell. Denying clearly what Scripture teaches. At times, we are driven to the Bible. Not enough times. We used to be driven more. That's one of the things that is really annoying about this COVID situation. First time in history, 
all the churches in the world, Christian churches, were shut down. First time. Wars, famines, uh, hurricanes, earthquakes, plagues, the churches remained open. This time, apparently we don't even care to fake it. Driven to the scripture sometimes to search and to find error in order to let ourselves off the hook. When we operate this way, we are operating with the very same spirit that was in Herod, seeking to destroy God. On the other hand, there is the faith like the Magi. That is also us. Or kind of civil war going on. That I may come and worship him, but with the joyful sincerity of Christ, we come to the altar. We come to hear God's word. By faith, the Magi left their homeland and followed the word of God and being led by a star. Totally on faith. Their actions were by faith. Their worship of Christ the child was indeed real, although I've read many commentaries that say, oh, we don't know if they really believed. That's organic fertilizer. Scripture says they worshipped him. And Scripture does not lie. They came to the Christ child, the real, and that faith was real because it was that Christ child that was the focus of their faith and the object of their faith. They didn't walk in and see this young mother, probably 13 years old, with this little baby and go, well, that's not very impressive. That's not what we came to worship. We came to worship something successful, something great. That can't be what the star is leading to. But no, in faith, they understood the importance of this time. We are like the Magi. When we live by faith, not by the sight or direction of the world. In fact, the world would call us foolish to believe in Jesus Christ. When by faith we actually are able to see ourselves for who we are. Poor, miserable sinners that have no right to accept from God or to expect from God blessing and honor and, and life itself. By faith, we understand that we are sinners. By faith, we search the scriptures to have revealed what God has given to us in that Christ child. We desire to hear the word of God that tells us our sins are forgiven, that lets us know that we have life, that tells us something the world will never tell us, that God indeed loves us. When by faith we come to worship we receive precious gifts. We share of our time, our treasure, and our talents. Not by conscription or by law, but out of joy. Joy for the gospel that is in this child. For we have seen his star in the east, and we come to worship him. That's why we come. That's why we gather. We worship him for no other reason than who he is. Almighty God. We worship him for the undeserved love that he has given us to the point, as Paul says, of death, even death on the cross. That your sins and my sins and indeed the sins of the world would be paid for. We come. We worship Him. 
by laying at his feet our whole life, for it is his. The world is a rough place. The world will not come to worship him. Christ has told us that we should expect no other treatment than what he got. So if we look to the world to pat us on the back and to hold us up, we will fall. And that's one of the things that is so disturbing. Tomorrow there will be all kinds of angst about an insurrection that wasn't, a weird insurrection with no weapons. There's going to be all kinds of noise about the, America is falling apart. America is going away. And what there should be is a call that America go back to Scripture, to faith. The assurance of salvation is not going to come from Fauci or from Pharma or from the government or from our friends and neighbors and relatives. Salvation comes in Christ alone. Epiphany is one of the most important days of the church year, especially for you Gentiles. I'm part Jewish. Because Epiphany shows that the gospel came not just to the Jews. The intent was for the world and for America in 2022. I didn't... <laughs> What played in my head was Biden calling it 2020, <laughs> missing this. And I didn't want to do it, but then I couldn't figure out what year it was. He is with us now. May we worship him for all he is, and may we rejoice that he has given us life and salvation. For Christ's sake, amen. We will continue with him 409 if it starts playing.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our, fle into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death that we might not die eternally because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with, archange with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you in hymn number 960. Him 960. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifest the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper you reveal your glory to us, Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood, so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
O Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us. You may come. Now may this true body and blood, uh, please stand. And now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in God's peace. Amen. Amen. O Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. For you have been... We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with him 400.
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.